Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport and it's time to go back to 2016 for another past Formula E race from Season 2, this time from Mexico City. This is supposed to be one of the best Formula E races of all time, at least that's what some of the comments I saw on the video I copied from said. We'll have to see because Season 2 has had some pretty good racing up to this point and I'm excited to see what this race can offer. Now, the grid is exactly the same as it was at the last race. No new changes. Salvador Duran is, of course, racing in his home Epri, so it's going to be interesting to see how he does. And with that, let's get going. Five lights are on, and we go green in Mexico City. And let's see who gets the best start on the run down towards turn number one. Sam Bird looking up the inside of Sarazan. D'Ambrosio's got the lead covered, and Afton de Grassi are so close to each other. They're going almost three wide at the back. Will everyone make it through? Only a few drivers cutting the corner. That was super, super clean. Conway almost pushed into the wall, but D'Ambrosio is the man who, from pole position, has managed to hold the lead of the race. But Frost is all over the back of him. De Grassi up into third place, and look at that around the outside of a bit of contact there as Sebastian Buemi tries to go around the outside. A bit of a traffic jam coming up further back. Everyone, though, seems to have emerged reasonably unscathed. Scott Speed, perfect start for D'Ambrosio and a pretty safe opening lap as well as they come into the stadium for the first time. Very respectful from everyone through the first corner. They all they all know the deal. they got to be safe right now. Got this long race, 43 laps. A lot's going to happen. Now let's just see uh, now they can settle in. The first five laps here are important because... You're either going to use way too much energy or not enough. And after that, you'll get into your groove and it'll all uh, start shaking out. Nico Prost makes a small mistake coming through the final chicane as they come out to complete lap one. Will that put him under pressure from this man, Lucas Degrassi, who's running in third position? Down the start, finish straight into turn one again. Nothing too crazy on lap one. It's all fairly sensible. There's a little bit of bumping here and there, but no one's out of the race so far. D'Ambrosio leads the way, which is... Not surprising because Dragon have really been on it this season. Let's see if he can hold that lead. What I will say is there are a couple of really crazy chicanes to navigate in this race. I'm sure we're going to see some action of them. Tan side, no real changes. Oh, straight on goes Daniel Apt. He's going to get back on in front of uh, Buemi. Yes, he will. So we'll see what happens there. Buemi might be close enough on the run down towards turn one. He's going to look to the inside line, but Daniel Apt will try and cover. Buemi looks to the outside line and goes through around the outside. Great move from Sebastian Buemi. Nothing Daniel Apt could do. And uh, you'd have thought Apt would have been able to hold that with the inside line. Yeah, well, with him going through the chicane in the corner before, I'm not quite sure what Apt, uh, what the proper, uh, let's say, move would have been yeah. in that case anyways. He's probably going to end up having to give that position back either way so yeah that's true he, he was behind him uh sorry he was in front of buemi but definitely gained an advantage by going straight over now well buemi just killed app dead with that move great move around the outside what i will say is scott speed is as good at commentating as he is at racing in formula e mostly he just sounds bored and we're only on lap four go prost with uh, degrassi in third spot at the moment then we've got Buemi, then we've got uh, Daniel Apt, then there's the gap back to Duval, Heidfeld. We've got quite a close battle between Mike Conway and uh, Salvador Duran, which is looking a bit spicy, as, uh, as is Oliver Turvey versus jean eric Byrne versus Bruno Senna. Here's the Conway-Duran battle over 12th position at the moment. Is Conway going to have a look coming through up the inside into the chicane? I don't think he's quite going to be close enough, but couldn't be much closer. He's in a bit of a golf aguri sandwich here with uh, Antonio Felix da Costa up behind him. Da Costa with a very wobbly, in fact, that front wing's come away. Most yeah. of that front wing's come away there, hasn't it? Yeah, that's that's potential trouble right there. Yeah, you don't want that to come away and get stuck under your front wheels. So, we'll see what happens as the race progresses for uh, Antonio Felix da Costa as they come through turn number 13 now. And the amount of vibrations and the bumps on this circuit aren't going to be helping that at all Onto the okay so we're about a quarter of the way through this race quite a big jump but nothing's really been happening there's not any overtakes of note no one's really got close to it the only thing that's happened is Degrassi locked up and skipped a chicane that's the most exciting thing that's happened there's looks like it's getting pretty close in the midfield so we might get some battling in the next few laps and now onto the brakes and oh and well it looks as though I think D'Ambrosio just takes a narrower line into that 
first corner and obviously he's going to even more now I think uh, black and orange meatball flag for Antonio Felix da Costa which means there's something wrong with your car you've got to come into the pits and fix that please or we will disqualify you essentially look how close the grassy is to the back of Nico Prost this is a very tight four-way battle isn't it if you're so if you're Degrassi in this so the top four are very very close you've got D'Ambrosio leading Prost leading Degrassi leading Buemi it's just nothing's really happening no one's going for moves they're sort of just following each other probably trying to psych each other out but it's been a bit of a slow race da costa had a wobbly front wing so he's been called in i presume that's from the first lap everyone sort of constantine it up and bumped into each other he's taken a bit of damage so he's got to fix that which will ruin his race otherwise at the moment still status quo to be honest uh, so, yeah, not really sure why he's getting so involved in that fight. But there you can see from the helicopter shot just the kind of uh, margin that D'Ambrosio has managed to pull out. Nick Heidfeld has set the fastest first sector of anyone, but he's only got 4% of usable energy remaining. This is going to be very, very tight for Heidfeld. Are we going to see everyone else do one more lap by the looks of things and maybe Heidfeld pit this time around? On board again with the rear view from Nico Pross and they stay out. So this will be the final tour now around this 1.3 mile circuit. And that shows us that Lucas, it's about... laps one, laps one. That's laps one till you come into the pits. About five or six percent is what you need to get a lap done around here then. And uh, just waiting to check. Yes, Nick Hyper has come into the pits. So he's come in uh, earlier than anyone. And there's a look from Degrassi up the inside. And he's waited until the final lap before the pit stop window to make the move on Nico Prost and move up into second position. There it is. Surprise attack. He must have a little bit more in the tank. Made good use of it. Yeah, he's, he's uh, up into second place then, Lucas Degrassi. Got slightly less usable energy than Nico Prost. But at this point, they've obviously uh, decided they can afford to go for that move so that means that it's d'ambrosio leading the grassy up into second nico prost down to third fourth is still sebastian buemi fifth is still daniel apton in sixth place is loic duval okay so now we're at the halfway stage and we're about to start the pit stops i think they will all be coming in this lap de grassi has finally done an overtake which i think is the first one in this race Really, since lap four, not a lot's been going on. De Costa got another penalty. He got a drive-through, so he's not having a great day. Uh, I think they said 10-second penalty. No, he had a 10-place grid drop. He's had to come into the pits to replace his front wing because that was damaged. Now he's got a drive-through for something. I think it was abusing track limits. It's hard to imagine how his day can get any worse. But now pit stops and we'll see if anything sort of jostles it up a bit. Maybe the second half of this race is going to be incredible. I honestly find it very hard to believe at this point. A key couple of moments now for Lucas Degrassi. Can he attack? Uh, Carlo, he's looking very racy. That thing looks extremely fast. He's got fan boost as well, Lucas Degrassi, of course. And he's using it now. Here comes Lucas, Lucas Degrassi. Break, balance, break. Balance. Pushes the fan boost, and D'Ambrosio covers the inside line, and Degrassi still tries to look to the inside line, so close between them, Degrassi locks up, manages to get it stopped in time, and takes the lead of the Mexico E3. Degrassi into first place, D'Ambrosio's coming back at him, around the outside of turn three, that's not going to be an overtaking opportunity, as they then come into the right-handed chicane, and so Degrassi has done it, he's used the fan boost, he's into the lead of the race, that's exactly what he would have wanted. Pic picture perfect. Yeah. The whole last five laps for Degrassi. Absolutely. So Degrassi really playing this strongly. He was saying to us yesterday in our live chatty that you can uh, watch back on the YouTube channel. So no big changes out of the pit stops. The dams have swapped around, which is like a tactical thing. Prost, for some reason, he seems to spend the first half of the race right at the top end of the field and then drop down as the second half starts. As they come out of the pits, Degrassi... Brilliant move on D'Ambrosio, really late on the brakes. And it's going to be interesting to see if he can keep the lead from here. I think, honestly, if he'd left it milliseconds later, it'd have crashed. Because it was right on the edge of really what the car was able to do. It looked very squirmy. Um, we've got 19 laps left, maybe 18. Hopefully it's going to pick up from here on out. 
and I know the lighting's changed. Don't worry, I have been to sleep, and therefore it is now daytime. So he is a bit of a way back. Nick Heidfeld having a very solid and lonely race uh, in seventh position. Wait for it. Here comes Heidfeld. Uh, very, very lonely in that seventh position. Then you've got uh, Sam Bird out of the corner there in eighth place. Ninth for Robin Freints. Uh, tenth position is Bruno Senna. Really good drive from Senna, actually, having started in 16th on the grid. He's now well up into the uh, points-paying positions. Simone de Silvestro, frustratingly for her, still just one position outside of the points. She's had three 11th-place finishes in her Formula E career and uh, yet to pick up a point, which must be unimaginably frustrating. But here's the battle for second place still. Degrassi is leading. And as it stands, he will take the lead of the Formula E Championship as we head to round six in Long Beach in three weeks' time. But Buemi is not going to want to let that happen. Bit sideways in the middle of the corner there from D'Ambrosio. Uh, yeah, Buemi, uh, this is going to be a great opportunity here. And, uh, and they just told D'Ambrosio on the radio, Buemi's going to look to the inside. Oh, he's into the back of him. They come together and they go both straight over the chicane. Jesus, he completely crashed into me. D'Ambrosio furious with that. It didn't look to me as though D'Ambrosio actually made too much of a move that time no. through. They both get away with it. Let's see if, yeah, it's just a bit of nose damage for Sebastian Buemi and uh, just a bit of rear pod damage. And that is not a very happy Swiss driver there. Sebastian Buemi just completely misjudges the move on D'Ambrosio and drives straight into the back of him. I'd be surprised if neither of them are damaged in some way. And Buemi has the goal to be angry at him. It was completely his mistake. Also, Scott Speed's helpful comment was, no. I don't know why Scott Speed is here, and I really miss Dario Franchitti. If they come, oh, and off. That's Antonio Felix da Costa. He's gone backwards into the barriers there at turn seven. Meanwhile, back what to this battle for second place. D'Ambrosio under pressure. Look from the inside from Buemi. He's darting around in the mirrors. He's trying to go around the outside. Great attempt from Sebastian Buemi. Surely he cut across the track there, and he, he can't. He again. He cut this again. I think D'Ambrosio made my point there. So let's see what happens here with Sebastian Buemi. Is he going to give that place back an audacious attack? But, and here comes Prost attacking, and they're going to make contact there. And this is really difficult times for D'Ambrosio. To me, Buemi's got to give that place back, Scott. Uh, the, the orange cone is gone. It's game on. I don't really know how they're going to call that. That's, that's going to be tough. So, uh, so De Costa has had a 10-place grid drop. He's had to come into the pits to change his front wing. He's had a drive through penalty, and now he's crashed backwards into the barriers. Definitely not his day. Boemi is getting more and more agitated behind D'Ambrosio. He cut the chicane, but he has not let D'Ambrosio back through yet. I'm sure he'll have to, but that's given Prost an apt the opportunity to catch up and get involved as well. It's getting a bit messy for a fight for second. What a battle we are having here for second place. So Sebastian Buemi is through up into that second position and now he will naturally start to pull away. And is that Buemi slowing down? D'Ambrosio's going wide, through goes Prost. And I think Buemi's trying to slow to give the place back. And now that means Prost is through and Zipsy is through. And D'Ambrosio, apologies for the language, but he is absolutely livid. And so he goes straight over the chicane himself to try and get back What's past. What's going on, guys? I don't understand. It's like the Wild West. <laughs> like, it's like wacky races. So, so make the penalties. Well, so uh, long and short of it is the positions are back to being the same after it. All cars around you are four position. Or it all got a bit nuts there, didn't it? So it looked as though Buemi was trying to let. And has he done it now? Yes, he has. So Buemi has let D'Ambrosio back through into that second place. And I think between them, they've resolved the fair order of things. Okay. It was a strange way of going about it, but I think we're there now. Yeah. And that all got a bit complicated. Honestly, don't know what Sebastian Buemi was doing. If he was letting D'Ambrosio pass, that was the worst way to do it. Prost almost capitalised and almost took out D'Ambrosio at the same time. And now Heidfeld and Sandberg have caught the pack as well. This is turning into, what is it, three, four, a six-way fight, if they can keep it up. There's only seven laps left, so hopefully we get some decent action over these last seven laps. So, right, let's just uh, calm down a little bit after all of that. We're still back in the same position where Sebastian Buemi has got to try and find a way fairly 
around Jerome D'Ambrosio. It was a nice try from uh, D'Ambrosio. And uh, that is that is John Eric Verne at the back of this queue, uh, who is a lap down. Sam Bird is uh, 25 seconds back down the road from this pack. So uh, Verne there in that Virgin is just out there for fun, really, uh, because he is running in 17th place. Oh, and that's Loke Duval uh, making a mistake. Didn't see what happened. I was looking at the timings there. But uh, Duval hasn't lost any positions. He's dropped back behind the Virgin car of Verne, but uh, that's all. So, and Nico Prost has been given a drive-through penalty. Drive-through penalty for Nico Prost for an unsafe pit release now. Goodness me, as if we could get any more drama into this Mexico City E-Prix race. There you can see confirmation from race control. The battle for second continues. That means that Daniel App is up into uh, fourth position once Prost now makes his pit stop. So now it's heating up even more. Now I made a mistake. I said it was... Heidfeld and Bird catching up. It wasn't Duval has caught up and Verne is there in his virgin, but he's a lap down. Now, Boemi is right on the back of D'Ambrosio, but he hasn't gone for another move. Maybe he's just waiting for the right time, setting him up, trying to do it properly this time. But Nico Prost has a drive through penalty. You know what I was saying about him running near the front and then dropping back? It's going to happen again, which is unfortunate, but it does elevate Apt to fourth. And Duval's going to be in fifth, despite making a mistake. He didn't really lose that much time anyway. But we've got about five laps left. I don't think they're catching Degrassi. Degrassi is ten seconds ahead of D'Ambrosio and Buemi. So it's all about the fight for second. So we're going on to the penultimate lap. Not a lot has been happening. We're still sort of waiting for Buemi to make his move. Prost has dropped back to sixth because of his drive through I think he had enough of a gap over Bird. Because I think the gap was something like 20 or 30 seconds. It's, uh... Unless Buemi makes a mad dive on D'Ambrosio, this has not been a great Formula E race. This is going to do... Drive to your dash, Jerome. Drive to your dash. He's going to lose the championship lead here to this man, Lucas Degrassi, who is leading the way into the stadium section for the final time. The cheers come up from the thousands of Mexican fans that have come here to see a motor race. And goodness me, have they seen a motor race. Check a flag, a little bit premature. He's still got two corners to go now, Lucas Degrassi. On board with Buemi. What can he do as they come down to 13? Doesn't look like he's got anything to do about it. Lucas Degrassi, out through the final corner, is going to win in Mexico City. He's going to take the lead of the Formula E Championship with a fantastic drive. But here comes Sebastian <laughs> Buemi. Right under the wheels. And it's side by side for second. Goodness me, and Buemi is livid with D'Ambrosio. This is going to get funky in the post-race. Uh, <laughs> this is Degrassi. <laughs> so Degrassi takes a commanding win and would subsequently be disqualified for having his car underweight. He should have had that extra burrito for lunch. God, I love burritos. But that means D'Ambrosio is your winner which he fully deserves after defending from Sebastian Buemi. Buemi seems to be mad at him, but honestly, he could have done better. It's his fault he finished third. Daniel App crashed right at the end, which I think he did manage to bring it home for points, but obviously way further down than he should have, and he did sustain damage, and also Apt lost out on a lot of points as well this race. Freins finished fifth, so he gets decent points. Prost actually managed to finish fourth in the end, so it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. And Sarazan scored points as well. Other than that, it's really business as usual. This was not a great e -pre. I'm actually very disappointed because the comments coming into this were, this is one of the best races ever. Not a lot happened. Yes, Buemi and D'Ambrosio had a good battle for the last quarter of the race. But otherwise, there was nothing really happening here. No overtaking at all wasn't really any battles. The field was very strung out. It was just a bit of a dull Libri. Definitely the worst one of season two so far. But, as always, let's go and look at the standings. So, the team standings. We have Edam still on top with 136. But Dragon, Jump, Apt, Audi. They're 10 points ahead after their good points haul. Virgin and Mahindra remain in the picture. Not much has changed in the driver standings. Sebastian Buemi still leads the way, but with a much larger gap. Lucas Degrassi remains second despite not scoring. 
Jerome D'Ambrosio has jumped Lloyd Deval and closed right up on Sam Bird. But otherwise, the top five are completely the same as they were at the last race. So that was the Mexico City e of 2016, the fifth race of season two. Buemi is still leading the way and he has quite a commanding lead now. We're going to have to see if there's some way for Degrassi to get back into this. This might be the last time we talk about Formula E for about a month. The next e in 2023 is on the 25th of March in Sao Paulo. Looking forward to that one and I'll be going back to season two around the same time as well. I might drop in before then. We'll have to find out. Thank you for watching as always. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Massive growth recently and I'm very, very happy to see you all here. So yeah, thank you for watching and have a good one.